This time on the Families Matter Most podcast. Anger is good for identifying problems, just not for solving them. So it's not wrong to feel angry. It's wrong to use the anger to solve our problems. And that's what I want to help you with. Every time Jen Dean speaks, I can see hope, knowledge, expertise, wisdom, and love. When Jen Dean speaks about parenting, we make sure that we are there to listen because we know we will get valuable advice. Families Matter Most with Jen Dean. She doesn't just give skills for us to be better parents, but she teaches us how to reach our children's hearts. And at the end of the day, that's what truly matters. Would you call yourself an angry person? Are you easily frustrated? Are you angry? Some clients I work with, they would say, absolutely. That's why I'm here, Jen, because I'm angry. I'm yelling. I'm visibly angry. Everyone can tell that I'm angry almost all the time. And I don't want to be that way anymore. But other clients appear to be quite calm. They appear patient and kind, and they try to be, you know, extra gracious to everyone around them. But they come to me because they say, Jen, I'm hiding it. I am so angry all the time. I want to yell. I want to flip out. I want to lose it on my kids. And it's taking every ounce of willpower I have to stay calm. Those people are kind of an enigma because nobody knows. Nobody knows. And they are actually, they are they are storing all of that anger inside. So they're not sleeping well. They're having a hard time processing emotions. Their thoughts could run away and be super out of control and negative. But there is help. So no matter where you are, I want to give you some tools today. And you can do this activity to reduce anger right now, whether it's obvious or hidden away somewhere deep, deep inside. I'm going to give you a strategy today to reduce anger right now. That's good news, right? I'm Jen Dean. I'm a family coach and I work with parents, kids, families to help increase more peace, have more joy, have more fun in your house. And come on, parents, you know, you know, you love your kids, (laughs) but we don't always like them. There's some negative behaviors that can hinder family life. I can help you work on those behaviors. I can also help you work on yourself. And today I want to help you reduce anger in your own heart and mind, but you can use this strategy to teach your kids, to model it, to practice, to talk to them about reducing anger. And this can work for the whole family. Good news is you're not as bad as you think. Okay. When I have clients, they always come to me and say, oh, Jen, you know, I'm the worst. I'm hopeless. You're not going to be able to help me. And I promise you I can. I don't think there's a single thing I haven't heard. I haven't seen. I mean, it's not a dare. I'm (laughs) I'm not hoping to be, to be shocked. I'm not looking for shock and dismay. However, I will say this, likely you're not alone. You're not as bad as you think you are. You're not a monster. And you know how I know? It's because you're listening to this podcast. I think the people that are beyond help, the people that need, you know, they need to see someone with more letters. They need letters behind their name. They need they need some more intense care and attention from a healthcare professional, I think they probably are not actively seeking out help. So there is something you can do. It's not as bad as you think. What I'd love for you to do is grab a scrap piece of paper and a pen, something to write on. If all you have is your phone, open up some kind of photo app so you can draw a little picture. We're going to make a very rough graft. Okay. It's arts and crafts time at Families Matter Most. I want you to get a paper and a pen. And what I want you to do is imagine you're drawing a graph and you have a line going from the beginning of your day till the end of your day. And I want you to try and chart what the anger and frustration is for you. So would it look like, now let's imagine a super calm, boring day would be like a straight line across. And let's let's think about the anger there. So if if you were getting angry very often, I would see lots of spikes in your anger. So it would be a straight line normally, but with lots and lots and lots of spikes in it. That would show me that you're getting angry frequently. What about intensity? How high do those spikes go? So think about this graph. Maybe you're, you you wake up super happy, so you're you're in a good place, but then, you know, the kids are fighting at breakfast and there's a spike. How 
How angry are you? What is the intensity? Is it just a little blip? And then you do you come back down to where you were or is it a huge spike? And then afterwards, does the line go back down to normal for you or does it stay really high and angry? Does it stay that way? If you're looking for some help, you know what? There's pictures on my website. If you go look under the podcast link, also on social media, I've created some videos to show you what these charts could look like. But think of it this way. It's going to be mostly a straight line, except for what is your anger? So every time you think you get angry, that's your frequency. That's how many times it's happening. How high the spikes are is the intensity. And then the third one is recovery. How long does it take you to get back to normal? Once you've spiked, does it pretty well immediately go back down to your baseline? Are you able to let it go and move on and then you're kind of back where you were? Or do you stay angry for a long time? Does it spike up and then stay really high before it comes down? Does it come down slowly? Maybe it takes you the rest of the day and it's slowly coming down. Does it ever get back to the normal, to the baseline? All of this will give us information. These are all clues. And the good news is you're probably not horrible at all of them. Probably one of those, you're like, huh, you know what? I get angry a lot, but I let it go. My recovery is really good. Or I'm frustrated a lot, but at least the intensity isn't crazy. I'm just really, you know, like low level angry all the time. Maybe that's your line. I'm curious as to what it is for you. So let me know, send me a message, send me an email, reach out over social. I would love to know what your chart looks like for you and what, you know, what you're learning about yourself. It's not as bad as you think it is. So draw a graph of your day with respect to anger and frustration. Go ahead and pause this. If you haven't done it while I was talking, pause this podcast and think about it, draw it out, make yourself a little chart it's arts and crafts time. I'll see you in a moment. So we're learning about our anger. Notice there's not judgment. I'm not here to harp on you. Hey, I've done everything wrong. Remember? <laughs> Remember, I was a yeller and I learned strategies and tools to deal with my anger to st on the outside to have more self-control and not yell at my kids. But then I also learned how to process it on the inside. And, you know, that's a bit of a journey. I'm working at it all the time, but I've made huge progress. So I don't want to teach you to be fake. I want you to actually live a good, joyful, peaceful life but part of it is the self-control piece. And I want you to think about the frequency. How often are you getting angry? How often is that happening? If you were to rate your frequency on a scale of one to 10, would you say, man, frequency is 10 out of 10. Like I am, I am always like jumping on that scale and I'm always moving up and spiking into anger. Or would you say, you know what? That's actually a two or a three. That's not really my issue. I struggle with other parts of anger, but not the frequency. Monica noticed she was pretty calm and her day went pretty well until the kids got home from school. Then the line went up frequently. Lots of spikes between four o'clock and bedtime. Okay, this is great information. This tells us so many things. Is your line kind of always in the high end? If your baseline is already a little bit frustrated, you know, if you're kind of operating, living your life at a a low level of frustration already, then when you think about it, it's only a matter of time until someone pushes you over the edge, right? And if you're kind of trying to squish your emotions down, this can also happen. If you're not dealing with emotions and they're kind of always there, but just under the surface, then it's really easy to spike, to move into anger quickly, frequently. You're trying so hard to stay calm, but it's not sustainable. It's not manageable. So you lose it. You lose it pretty easily. That might be a sign, right? If there's lots of frequency that tells us something's going on or there's a certain time of day that we need to do some work on. We need to do some work on preparing you for that time a little bit better. So for Monica, we, we created a plan to help her prepare mentally, emotionally for four o'clock. And that involved giving her a real break beforehand so she could kind of get ready, so she could start that part of her day from a little bit more of a full cup. So that helped her. We also worked on strategies, tools to deal with that frustration ahead of time to deal with stress. So, so let's find some proactive solutions to help you deal with stress before you get frustrated. 
creating a regular practice uh, that will reduce the stress in your life is huge. This helped Monica a ton and I think it can help you. So what do you need? Is it exercise? Exercise, water, sleep. Those are the big ones, guys. Exercise, water, sleep. Is that what you need? If you are frequently spiking in the evening, is it that you're tired? Maybe you're just tired. Maybe you need to go to bed. Maybe your day needs to come to an end and you need to get to bed. You need to get a little bit more sleep. Maybe it's a spiritual thing. How is your spiritual practice? You know, lots of my clients have a strong faith but lots don't. And you need to find what works for you. So it could be prayer, scripture. It could also be nature, going for a walk, meditation. What is it for you? Is it journaling? You need to find some peace and calm every day if you can. I have a a really great app that I like to use. It's free. It's five minutes. They are faith-based meditations. I love it personally. It's called Soul Space. It's a little bit cheesy, I admit it, but it works well for me. You know what? You get over the cheese and then you're like, huh, you know what? I kind of really like this actually. Next one, intensity. You're saying, Jen, I don't get mad very often, but when I do, it's off the charts. It's like I can hold myself together for so long and then I just lose it and I spike, you know, into the stratosphere. So this tells me that you have some emotions to work through, right? You need some real strategies to reduce anger in the moment when it happens. And that is tough. Don't get me wrong. That's hard to keep it from going to a 10. So yeah, you're going to get angry. Let's try and get it down to a seven or eight. Let's try and get it down to a six or seven. We'll work on practices that way. You're also taking the presenting issue very personally. You're overreacting. And whenever we do that, it's because you've made it mean something about you. I would love to work with you to unpack what's going on and help you reframe the situation. So a perfect example would be the kids aren't listening to you and you're calm, you're calm, you're calm, you repeat yourself, you're smiling, you're gracious, and then you freak out because deep down inside, you've you've taken it personal. You've said something to yourself like, nobody respects me, nobody cares about me, I don't matter to anyone. Notice you made it mean something about you. When in reality, is it typical kid behavior, right? For kids not to listen, of course it is. And if, and and we work on it and we still have consequences, but we don't need to take it personally. By learning how to take control of your thoughts, becoming more comfortable talking about your emotions and how you feel, I know nobody's favorite, but if you can do that, you'll be able to see more clearly what's really going on. You'll probably still be frustrated, honestly, but with practice, you should be able to see it as a problem to solve. So when our intensity is really high, we, we've we made it mean more in our heads, and now it feels out of control, it feels hopeless, it feels impossible. But remember, anger is good for identifying problems, just not for solving them. So it's not wrong to feel angry. It's wrong to use the anger to solve our problems. And that's what I want to help you with. So anger lets us know something isn't working, but we can use it to figure out what that is and how we can work on it and solve the problem. So Tom learned how to manage his frustration (laughs) instead of trying to ignore it. And he worked on not making it mean that nobody cared or respected him. He learned how to solve the problem and you know, not overreact, he reduced the intensity and the frequency of his anger. You're saying, Jen, this is too simple. No, really, it's not that hard. When we when we take it apart, notice we're we're not being judgy. We're stepping back and saying, you know, instead of what's wrong with you or why, you know, why are you acting this way? We're saying, huh, what's happening? What's going on here? We're breaking up anger into little bits. And that's helpful. It's helpful. And you're going to see an improvement just by spending time thinking about this. You're going to think about this chart. You're going to look for patterns. The last one is recovery. If your graph looks like it takes forever for you to let your anger go, you're spending too long. You're spending too long in a negative thought spiral. A lot of what I do is helping parents take their thoughts captive. And I love this because this was a game changer for me. I think I spent so many years ruminating, thinking about my problems, 
but not really working on them. So it was just the negative thoughts over and over and over and over. And it can kind of feel productive because you're thinking about it, but you're not thinking about it in a helpful way. When I figured this out, that's when I made some changes in my life. That's when I feel like I had progress and I could accept myself. I could have some peace. So I want to help you with that. Ruminating is not productive. Thinking about everything that's wrong is not the same as working through it. So you're you're going to get stuck. You're going to get stuck in guilt. You're going to be, you know, feel shame. Rhonda would feel awful after yelling at her kids. She would feel so much mom guilt for hours. You can relate, right? I've been there too. Sometimes even days, she would hold on. She wouldn't be able to forgive herself. Her thoughts would tell her she was the worst mom ever, that she didn't deserve to even have kids, that something's wrong with her. She would try to make it up to them. You know, you've been there. She would apologize repeatedly. She would ignore her own feelings and try to be perfect from, for them. She would give them, you know, whatever they wanted. She would feel guilty and try and be extra fun, happy, cheery mom for days afterwards. But it wasn't real. It didn't come from a desire to spend time building her relationship with the kids. It came from some deep, desperate need for them to love her, forgive her, to tell her that she's okay, that she's a good mom. Unfortunately, too, oh man, our kids, they learned to use it as manipulation. And all they had to do, kids are so smart, all the kids had to do was to tell mom, that, you know, she was a mean mom or a bad mom or she hurt their feelings oh, and they could get whatever they wanted. Kids are brilliant, man. Not that it's not true sometimes. Sometimes kids are really sharing their heart, but kids are smart and they also learned that they could manipulate mom's feelings to get what they wanted. So is it really difficult for you to apologize, to make it right, forgive yourself and move on? Do you hold on to those negative emotions? Do you get stuck in a negative thought spiral where you're just repeating all these awful things about yourself over and over and over again? Maybe you need to work on taking your thoughts captive. These are all connected, of course. Frequency, intensity, recovery. So I already asked you to rate your frequency on a scale of one to 10. What would you rate the intensity? Would you say, man, it doesn't happen often, but when it does, it's 10 out of 10. Or maybe you'd say, you know what? I get angry a lot, but it's only a two out of 10. I'm not really mad. And then the last one, recovery. What would you rate yourself in recovery? If it's 10 out of 10, that means, man, I have a hard time. I hold on to it for days. I feel awful. If it's two out of 10, you know, I'm not bad. Likely, you're not terrible at all of them. There's probably one of these where you could say, hey, you know what? I'm not so terrible. And maybe there's one where you're hmm, you're thinking, yeah, that's that's my nemesis right there. I need to work on intensity or I need to work on recovery. These are all connected. But when you work on one area, you will see an improvement in all of them. So don't put this off. This is something you can do. This doesn't even take work. All I want you to do is rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 in the three areas, set a reminder in your phone for a week from now so that in a week there will be an alarm that goes off and say, hey, rate frequency, intensity, and recovery. Rate them again. And hopefully, hopefully you're going to see a slight reduction in one or maybe all of them. That's what I want for you. Slow progress is ideal. I want you to be thinking about it. I want you to be noticing. If you have a blow up where you're like, man, that was off the charts today, what happened? What? Maybe you were really tired. Maybe you got some bad news. Maybe you had a fight with your partner and it threw everything off. Maybe you were just miserable. Like what was going on? You might say, oh yeah, Jen, I was feeling super negative about my life and I was kind of miserable and cranky and I took it out on everyone around me. Yeah, that's worth noticing and paying attention to what happened so that we can try and prevent it in the future. There's things that we can do. It is not hopeless. There are strategies and tools that can help. You can make a difference. So don't quit on yourself. Don't you dare quit on your kids. I'm not quitting on you. I'm cheering for you every single day. Let me know how you're doing. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for listening to the Families Matter Most podcast with Jen Dean, part of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. 
If you are interested in contacting Jen for one-on-one -on -one parent coaching, for speaking engagements, or just to get a little more information, please visit our website, familiesmattermost.com.